okay, he wants to go there. The Knicks really want him. And so are they just haggling over and we'll see who gives in? Or are the Knicks just not willing to meet the price that Danny Ainge wants? It seemed like we were hurtling very fast towards a Donovan Mitchell to the Knicks deal. And I guess was the offer just obviously not good enough yet? Or we just did a, we're a standstill? Danny Ainge is clearly going to ask for a king's ransom. As and, so should. Now, and so now we got a little bit of a stare down, it seems. And so you make the choice if you're the Knicks, right? Are we willing to give up the extreme amount of assets that Danny Ainge is requiring for us to get Donovan Mitchell? Or is it more prudent for us to not do that right now and just say, fine, enjoy your time with Donovan Mitchell? I, you know, because it, it seemed like we were headed towards that so fast, but you know, if the deal's it there, it, you felt yeah. that. You felt that. I, I, I didn't really, honestly. I, I like, how come? What, what was the report that made you feel that way? When DraftKings moved it, uh, and FanDuel moved it, and everybody moved it from like plus three hundred to minus two fifty or minus three hundred. I mean that that's your signal. Donovan Mitchell's next team. When they put that at minus money. When you when you got to really lay money in order to make money, that's when you usually know. It tipped us off on the Bancaro thing, even though well, even though Woj came back over the top and 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 flipped those odds. But the Bancaro thing, the books had that first. I'd love to know the real story behind that. The real story: who placed that bet to move those odds? Why did those odds move overnight? I don't, I don't feel like I'm in a position. I don't have those types of sources in like well, the betting industry. Just, it, but, it doesn't have to be a bet. It could be just information. Yeah, but I'd love to know what's the real story between but behind those odds moving the way they did. Yeah, I mean they because they, the that's because it is it is fascinating the way that happened that night. And maybe make it still happen. You know what I mean? Just still happen. I mean, with Ben Carroll, like the way, like the way they moved overnight, that was that oh, was yeah, wild. somebody knew because some, I was. I was somebody up late knew on something. The West Coast. Somebody yeah, knew somebody something. Somebody knew. Somebody knew. Somebody knew something. Yeah. It's yes. very interesting. And and those odds got flipped. Oh God. They, yeah. Look. These syndicates and whoever else, I mean, they got they got people everywhere. Yeah. They usually they somebody know. Somebody knew something. And, they and yet, know. And and yet, like, there's still confusion on draft day. Like you right. said, Woj reported that morning, like that wasn't certain yet. The players weren't told. All right. Somebody knew. Somebody knew. Yep. Uh, and so that's kind of <laughs> how I feel about the Donovan Mitchell thing. That's why when you asked me why I was confident, why, those odds flip dramatically to the Knicks being the super favorite. And so I guess... Well, we'll they, I mean, they, they should be. You know, if, if he gets traded, they should be the super favorite. Yeah. That's where, I, that's where he wants to go. I think it's a little uh, peculiar that, okay, he wants to go there. The Knicks really want him. and so. Are they just haggling over and we'll see who gives in? Or are the Knicks just not willing to meet the price that Danny Ainge wants? Would you give up RJ Barrett in a deal for Donovan Mitchell? I don't think they're I don't think they want RJ Barrett because of the contract coming up. It's what we just talked about with the Grimes thing earlier. Yeah. You gotta pay him. That's not what they're trying to do right now. You're not. You're not. You're not. You're not trading for RJ Barrett, and you got to pay him next year. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not sure Danny Ainge is an RJ guy. Well, and you'd also want right, like the uh, you know the younger guys, the guys that got a couple more years on their contract. Yeah, so. and they and they also want Grimes, more. Ob, maybe uh, maybe quickly. You know, you want all that. And, I, and I've heard, of, like I think in those discussions, they want the Knicks picks, like the yeah. unprotected Knicks picks, not <laughs> like the other stuff. Of course, they do. Yeah, because like all those other picks, they're they're all heavily protected, heavily like top fifteen protected, top eighteen protected, and whatnot for years. It's been a pretty good bet that if you've got the Knicks pick, you've got a lottery pick. I mean, you got a pretty good twenty something year track record now. Yeah, where you probably got a pretty good pick if you've got yeah. the Nick if you've got the Knicks pick in the draft. They may change that. 
the, what, what did you think about, I think it was Mark Stein who said that if they were to get Mitchell, they could become a team that could land Russell Westbrook in a deal to move future salary. And the intentions for that would not be to have Russell Westbrook in their starting backcourt. It would be to acquire him, likely waive him, and then you have cap space in 2024 or cap flexibility in 2025. I'm sorry, I mixed up my years. You would have cap space in 2023 or cap flexibility in 2024. So I think for the Knicks, like, like to me, that's the ideal scenario. Getting Mitchell and Russ and dumping salary and then you have your number two star in Mitchell. You have a good point guard in Brunson. You get some good young talent still remaining on your team and space. Like that, that's a position where things suddenly get interesting for the Knicks, where maybe those picks end up not being good for the first time in decades. Yep. yep. You do wonder if the Rudy Gobert trade now really hurt the chances for teams to be able to get Mitchell for a price they might have because he was able to extract just an absolute king's ransom from Tim Conley and in the Gobert trade. And so now you kind of know the price of doing business with Danny Ainge. And I don't know if anybody's going to meet that. It's going to be fascinating to see because, you know, look, Danny may just stand pat and say, fine, we'll bring back Donovan Mitchell. You don't want to give us what we want to get. Nobody wants to give us... uh, you know, the Heat can't find a third team. The Knicks don't want to give us what I'm asking for. Fine. And you then you've got Donovan Mitchell. And then, you know, as the season goes on, that's when teams decide, okay, fine. We'll give you what you want. Because it does seem like Danny's pretty dead set on getting a monster return for Mitchell. And if he can't get it, then he'll just wait. They added that one guy. I, I, you know, this one really flew under the radar. This uh, Simone Fontecchio that they signed the Jazz uh, from overseas. And I saw the headline and it was like, the Jazz signed Simone Fontecchio. So, of course, I typed his name into YouTube. Yo, this dude has got a shot that He's is... A bucket. As pretty a jumper, the ball spins. Like, if you are teaching someone how to shoot, and, like, I watched a lot of highlights, and the damn thing looks the same every time. This guy, like, we'll see what he does in the NBA. He's, I think they say he's 26, but for a guy that I just, like, looked up on YouTube, and then I'm like, all right, I'll check this guy out. I'm like, my God. Look at the backspin on that thing. Like His shot just looks perfect every time. And he's got this high release. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested in him uh, because he um, I never heard of him before. Simone Fontecchio. But this is the benefit of nowadays being able to look up anybody on YouTube. People can go check out this dude's YouTube highlights. And it, there's like one there's a video I watched that said why the jazz wanted Simone Fontecchio. <laughs> and, and I watched it and I was like, damn, I want him. This guy makes everything. <laughs> I know it's a highlight video, but yeah. the shot looks so pure. It's crazy. I mean, he, he didn't make 100% of his shots, but he did make over 40% of his threes, well over. <laughs> but it just looks so good when he shoots it. Yeah, yeah, he's got a good looking shot. Uh, yeah, Fontecchio, it's cool that he came over to the NBA uh, for Utah, hopefully for Danny Ainge. As another Italian forward, he works out better than Gigi Datome did in Boston. Yikes! Um, Gigi, Gigi was fun. I, I like, I like Gigi. He's a, yep. he's fun, man. Yeah, he can shoot it. You know. Yeah. 